any, in Austria, and it was to be played on a pipe organ. A pipe organ. Those things, huge, majestic sounding instruments. But a weird thing happened that day, the pipe organ busted. And they wound up having to play this song the first time it was ever revealed to the public on a guitar. So we got a chance, Jay, we got a chance. <laughs> so y'all feel free if you want to sing along with this. Uh, if you're German, uh, the title of this is Stille Nacht. Uh, <laughs> if you're rednecks like us, it's Silent Night. <laughs> out here the first time I came on Christmas and I came on the wrong night. None of y'all showed up. <laughs> and uh, it was a beautiful drive. Nobody got hurt and, and it got back. And uh, uh, But I just I just love the spirit in this church house. I, I can tell that the Lord is working here and he's here. And just the decorations and the, and the, the atmosphere around here is just kind of like the church God's people ought to be. Whether you go to church over here or over there or what the sign says outside your church, that sign not getting anybody into heaven is what's in here. You got Jesus in here. That, that's, that's the only way to heaven. He said so. He's the owner of heaven so he can decide who gets in. And he made it easy enough for every one of us, whosoever will. And, uh, you know, we need to get busy because uh, we really hadn't done as good a job as we can of sharing that salvation with the lost and dying world. It's a crazy world we're living in, all right? But, you know, he's got us here for a reason. 
He didn't just drop us off here and say, y'all hang in there, I'll be back one day. No, we're supposed to be bragging on Jesus while we're out here and, uh, and witnessing, sharing that good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ with everybody. And if necessary, you can even use words to do that. <laughs> Your lifestyle many times is the best sermon anybody will ever see or the worst sermon. So how are we living out there, y'all? How are we going to act tomorrow when we get out in the world and somebody cuts us off in traffic or, or maybe an election don't go like we want it to do or something like that. Hey, God's still on the throne. And nothing takes him by surprise. And he thinks we're to die for. So uh, we're going to do one more tune here. And uh, it, uh, I don't know really that this has a whole lot to do with the gospel. It comes with celebrating Christmas. Uh, Carol of the Bells. I, I love hearing my grandson play this.
That was a holy night. That's a wonderful song, a wonderful truth. It was a holy night, and it was divine. But do you realize we need to stop and think? It was a very hectic night for Joseph and Mary. They had just traveled almost 100 miles on a donkey, and Mary was expecting. And God planned it that way. God chose to have the Roman Caesar issue a census. They're good at that, you know, taxes, but uh, God arranged that and had him do that. So they would travel to Bethlehem because God said that's where he's going to be born, the city of David. Yeah. It was also the city, it was the city where the uh, shepherds would gather and keep their lambs for the Passover sacrifices. And so they had traveled that hectic night and, and got there and then came time for her to deliver and there was no place to stay. The roads were crowded. Traffic was terrible. Everyone was kind of traveling and there was no place to stay. And she was about to have a baby. <clears throat> it was a hectic night. God chose it that way, I think, because he was identifying with us. He was coming for us into our mess. Life under the sun, as, as uh, Solomon said, it's not, not very pretty. Not much bright under the sun. It's all death and darkness because of our sin. And this is the important truth of all of this about Jesus is that we are lost sinners yeah. in darkness, in the night. And Jesus, God, came to us in Jesus to come to us in our place to save us from our sins. And he was the lamb. I think that's why he came to Bethlehem with the shepherds and why God told the shepherds that night because God was bringing his lamb that night. And later he would be a sacrifice, the sacrifice that would pay for all of our sins. That was 2,000 years ago, but that was for us today. Here, he knew us. And he died for you, and he died for me. And that's the important work here of Jesus. That's what Christmas is about. It's not, it's not about a holiday and we can have enjoyable things. It's about God's work to save us. And he did all of that, but there's one thing left to do. You can have a present given to you and be all wrapped up and be already provided and there with you. But if you don't take it and receive it and open it, it does nothing for you. You don't benefit at all from it. Jesus died on the cross and all of our sins were put on him. He provided salvation. And then there's one thing left. We must receive it. And that's a personal thing. Each person must do that. Receive Jesus in their heart, themselves. And that's how we're saved. It doesn't happen through a church. It doesn't happen by doing religious things. And it doesn't happen just because you're a good person. It's by personally telling God, I am a sinner, I have messed up, I am guilty, and I want to repent of that. Turn from my sin, and I receive you into my life to save me. Please save me, Lord Jesus. That's the prayer that forgives our sins, that receives forgiveness of sins from the Lord Jesus. And believe on him that he died for you and rose from the dead. That's the Christmas gift. And I ask you tonight... Uh, have you received that, the gift of all gifts? And if you haven't, I pray you will this season. And it will be the best gift you've ever received. Mm -hmm. To repent and believe on Jesus. Mm -hmm. And receive that wonderful gift in your life. That's what all this is about. And Jesus has provided this for us. And this is what the Christmas season every year is. Jesus gives us opportunity to have this broadcast around the world. Every year. And so... Let's 
praise him tonight. All right, uh, kids going to come back and uh, sing some more. We have some special treats for you.
We think she's going to get the hang of the piano after a while. She keeps practicing. Thank you, Grace. Uh, she's really stepped up her level on, on the piano, and that's that's just, that's God's gift, you know. That's that's yeah. God's blessing of music. Yeah. You have a keyboard of 88 keys, and you hit them all at the right time, and all that tune comes out. That's just amazing to me. I don't see how she gets her fingers moving that fast, but uh, it's a wonderful blessing that we get to hear in our home, and uh, we're glad to share it with you. All right, uh, Brother Mike shared the story of Silent Night earlier, and uh, that's another example how Christmas involves stuff that's broken, stuff that messes up, and this wonderful gift of Silent Night came out of a great problem. That, that those musicians that night thought, oh, this is the worst thing. It's all, this is all, you know, Christmas program is messed up. This is all ruined. And Silent Night came out of that. That's how God does. Yeah. You know, his specialty is bringing his blessing out of our brokenness. And uh, that's an important thing to remember in this Christmas, our Christmas uh, celebrations. So we're going to share our version of uh, Silent Night with you. And uh, think about God's wonderful ability to take our brokenness and turn it into something. Thank you. 
tonight. We have uh, one more I want to share with you. It's a really good ending song, really great summary truth for our lives, for our lives to be. It's all glory be to Christ. You know, everything is, is about Christ uh, in our Christmas season. I saw a sign today, and I thought it was really good. It's Mary and Christ was all capital, and everything else was smaller. Mary Christless. Yeah. And that's it. You know, we need to remember all this is about Christ. It's all to his glory. All the joy and blessing we have is all to his credit and all of his blessing on us. <laughs>